Gibby and Finnegan show episode 48 the show that nearly never happened <laughs> it's not that we didn't try <laughs> no there are many many tries mm. there's a couple of couple of pretty good failures and then multiple attempts because you have a real job and have and to you go have a real job and I have a real job and, and hotel room uh, Wi-Fi not very reliable it turned out that 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 problem we had was not on your end. It uh, it was where I am. Got really? it solved. Yeah. So it, it, if if I'd have known that, it would have worked. Wow. Oh. Because I, I was able to fix it later. <clears throat> well, given the seediness of the room I was in, I um I really assumed it was my Wi-Fi. <laughs> I did too. So I'm not being. I don't feel too bad, but yeah. And this morning I had an option of uh, free Wi-Fi or sixteen dollar Wi-Fi that they promised would be faster. So, uh, fans. Friends, no, I sprung sixteen dollars to make this happen. And wow. you ponied up, <laughs> and I'm hungover. So. And he's hungover. Oh man! Well, what can can you share a lot of this stuff? Oh yeah, there's no secrets. I was celebrating. I was out celebrating with uh, Tony Angelo, who co-starred in this most recent episode of Roadkill that I worked on, and we brought stubby bob back from the dead and if you've not ever seen roadkill or that particular episode stubby bob is a 1950 ford f6 two-ton dump truck and we've already filmed two episodes with it freiberger and i where uh bought it from a farmer cut four feet out of the back of the chassis and slid the two-speed rear axle up against the cab making it stubby bob then in the second episode we got the bright idea to put the engine in the back of stubby bob Um, not because we had a grand idea for that. It was just because the flathead that was under the hood sucked, and the engine that we had was a Junkyard 454 that wasn't going to fit easily. So Mm. we rationed. It's easier to put it in the back of the truck. And once Freiberger had that grand idea, I thought, let's put it in backwards, and let's put the transmission inside of the cab, and we'll connect it to a boat V-drive, which reverses the direction of the drive shaft down to the axle. So we did that, and while we were doing that, one of our coworkers, KJ, bet us that we couldn't wheelie the truck and make the trailer hitch drag on the ground. Now, it was never our intention initially to wheelie the truck, but when he challenged us, we thought, all right, we're not going to change anything we're doing, but we're going to attempt this. What anyway. I wasn't really into, yeah, we're going to attempt this anyway, but what I wasn't really into was dragging the trailer hitch on a truck you've cut four feet out of the wheelbase of means near standing it straight up and down and one i didn't think it was possible and two i really wasn't excited about doing it so we went out there and this was i don't know two years ago and we did a couple really nice wheelies with freiberger driving like four footers very smooth nice landing and mind you the truck is stock stock leaf springs no shocks up front. Stock split rims, the Widowmakers that blow apart and kill people. Um, you know, was the, the was the rear suspension the original rear suspension? That, so it was it was this whole truck with four feet missing. Right, it was stock. It's the original leaf spring pack minus half the leaf springs because it had I think sixteen leaf springs in the back of this truck. Uh-huh. You know, it was a dump truck. It was made to haul stuff. We took half of them out to try to lower the rear of the truck and soften up the suspension. It lowered it. It didn't soften it at all. Um, there, it basically has no suspension in the rear. And up front, again, leaf springs that we didn't touch any of them. Mm-hmm. Completely stock. So Freiberger goes out there with me riding shotgun and does some really nice wheelies. You know, the, the technique is, and we didn't have a technique. We didn't even know it would wheelie. So we sat there, foot braked it, brought up the RPM, let go of the brake. And if you floor it, it would just loft the front wheels in the air like four feet and you know, do a nice, I don't know, 10 foot wheelie down the road, not on the trailer hitch. So then Freiberger gets out of the truck and puts it on me to try to win this bet with KJ, which was, I think for a hundred dollars, you know, can we get this thing to stand up on the trailer hitch? I'm not good at math. We really didn't test anything. And it didn't occur to me that (laughs) if it stood up on the trailer hitch, we would essentially be dragging the beer keg gas tank we had installed at the back of the truck um behind the engine yeah it's behind the engine between the frame rails i got a a beer keg from my buddy 
And uh, we mounted it there, and that's what's holding the fuel. Well, when you stand it up on the trailer hitch, that beer keg is almost dragging on the ground. It's like a paper slip away from hitting the ground. So I go out there. We had no seat belts. Uh, no oh, problems. wait a minute. Didn't you wrap yourself in, like, bubble tape? Yeah. So stunt guys, I've heard over the years, will put bubble wrap around their midsections and asses to cushion the landing. Uh-huh. Don't know if it's true. I just heard it. So I did that, right? Well, as usual with roadkill, it's hurry, 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 build the truck, and then immediately go somewhere and try it. Well, we forgot to put seatbelts in it. So I went out there wrapped in bubble wrap. I put it at like, I don't know, 4,000 RPM, let go of the brake, and it stood straight up on the trailer hitch. And as soon as it hit the trailer hitch, it drug it on the ground, and when it hit the trailer hitch, it threw me forward, because I wasn't belted in, and bounced my helmet off the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. My My foot came off the gas, and then it just fell, like a full story. Bang! And uh, gravity broke. worked. Yeah. Oh, it does. And yeah. it, broke, it broke the driver's side leaf spring pack in half. Like it broke a leaf spring, a thick one. You, you, you know, I, as and I know the videos here, and there's there's been countless promos made of it. You're lucky you didn't get hurt. Mm. Like oh, truly okay, hurt. For, I've never had back trouble, but for three weeks after that, I thought, is this how my life is going to be? Like I, my dad's got back trouble and I always hear him complain about it. And I feel horrible for him because it just seems like such a crappy thing to endure mm-hmm. for three weeks straight. My back hurt. And I'm like, Oh no, what have is I done? This permanent? Like right. all for a video. <laughs> so eventually, eventually it goes away. Thank God. So anyway, a couple weeks ago, Tony and I decide we're going to bring Bob back. So it, and when I mean Bob, when I say bring Bob back, it's because that one wheelie that I did in the truck broke it. The cooling system was busted. It broke the front leaf springs. It jacked up the steering. I mean, it was a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, and since that was two years ago, so for two years, this truck's just kind of been around, going to car shows and just driving around. It doesn't really, you know, it didn't really work. We didn't attempt any more wheelies. Yeah, I saw him at SEMA last year. Yeah, it was hon- at SEMA. honestly, he lo- he looked fine. Well, yeah, you had to. If you poked your head under it, you'd see the leaf springs were busted in half. Oh, I didn't. And the truck sat crooked, and but it's such an interesting looking truck. Nobody ever notices how screwed up it really is. Mm. They're always looking at it, going, "When are you going to wheel it again?" And I'm like, "I ain't wheeling this thing again. This thing's a mess." Um, and so Tony and I thought, let's make some mods to it, and let's try to do you know wheelies that don't kill us, and you know that you can do repeatably. So. We built a back half roll cage. We pulled the old front straight axle out and leaf springs and Widowmaker wheels and tires, which, by the way, weighed about 470 pounds. Each wheel was 135 pounds, the wheel wow. and the tire. I believe um, it. And we replaced it with really lightweight, not built for the job stuff from Speedway Engineering. It was a kit, I think, for a van. We welded on new leaf spring mounts, put these little tiny leaf springs in there. We found an old set of coilover shocks missing the coils that were going to go on the vet hack cart. We welded mounts in for those. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we built a roll bar for the back half of the truck so that if it flipped over, it would keep us from getting crushed. And it won't smush the engine either. Right. Because you you sent me pictures and video, and I, I... I don't know what to do with this. Can I, I want to tell the world about this. Oh, yeah. We never had okay. anything to kill. You can tell everybody. It's um, it's really thought thought out well because the, the two, basically the hoops that you have are, are there to, for double duty. One, you're not going to kill yourself this time. At, at, well, as quickly. And, and number two, it won't smash the engine up. Yeah. But my questions were, what were the, what were the two rods coming off the back because one was going down yeah. with spring loads and then the other was the same rod flipped backwards and then it looked kind of like a like a wheelie bar upside down with wheels for luggage so tony wanted <laughs> I'll a put together bar. tony wanted a wheelie bar and uh i thought all right well let's try to make that work so we didn't have time to build our own setup appropriate for this so i ordered a competition engineering wheelie bar kit which is meant to go on the axle tubes of a race car our axle tubes are five inches in diameter. It wouldn't go on there. We didn't have time to build brackets, and it would have put it too far under the car, really. 
So Tony made tabs that he welded to the trailer hitch, and it had two modes. If you hooked the upper bars to the top tabs, that was party mode. That would essentially allow this thing to go almost vertical, but in theory, without hitting the trailer hitch on the ground. We actually lifted Bob up with a forklift until the wheelie bar contacted the ground to make sure if the wheelie bar worked, the trailer hitch wouldn't hit the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it had a lower mode where the wheelie bar, you know, when the truck's at rest, those little luggage wheels were on the ground. So it, you know, it should work and you should be able to drag race this thing. We did nothing else other than add seatbelts. So we go, we go out to, um, we road trip it. We drove it from LA, uh, basically to Fresno, which is about, I don't know, a four hour drive in LA traffic on a Friday. We fired this thing up and we drove Bob through LA traffic. It was amazing. I've this never is all, seen all the same engine still, right? Yeah. We've touched nothing. It's all the same junkyard 454 with a wine supercharger and a couple Holly double pumpers on top. And so we road trip it. And on the way there, um, it breaks, uh, fantastically. The engine does. And we fix that and we show up to the Eagle field drags. That's why we were going nostalgia drag racing event on an old airport runway. Um, it's run by a couple of guys. Uh, one of them is named Rocky. He's super cool. He's a racer. Um, the other guy, Joe owns the place. Really nice guys. We show up very late cause it's roadkill. Um, mm -hmm. we get there and we're on the starting line in front of, I'd say a thousand people. There were a lot of people there. And I put it on the converter again, and it destroys the V drive. Oh, no. I should have never said V drive because that is what I think just like no. Which has a one inch input and output shaft. It just twists them, breaks and, them off. And would it be, I mean, oh, I'm sure a lot of people know this stuff, but your boat experience is what keyed that in for you, right? Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the parts and techniques in this I used based on my boating experience. Like the engine is mounted with an aluminum motor plate that I built, and it would be similar to something I built for a drag boat. And the V drive is out of you know an old. Uh, it's not exactly a drag boat. Like drag boats use them, but they use a much better version than what we had. We had the option of you can buy a five hundred dollar V drive built in the sixties for a two hundred horsepower boat. Or you could spend thirty five hundred dollars on a real V drive, um, and you know have success. And mm -hmm. we we couldn't afford it, so that's a lot of money. Yeah. You're uh -huh. you're a throwaway. <laughs> v drives cost yeah. money. Yes. <laughs> so uh, so we broke the V drive, and uh, we tried to weld it back together. It broke again. So we run out of time on that shoot, and we all go home because we have other things we have to be doing. And in the meantime, we finally buy. The good V drive. Actually, we didn't even buy it. The guy I originally bought the $500 V drive from traded me our broke V drive for the V drive we actually needed, which the, is bigger the, input and output shafts, and they're splined. And um, his name is Slim. He's super cool. Didn't you trade in the first place? Yeah, yeah. I traded an even worse V drive. Slim's an interesting man. Um, he's very generous, that man. Hmm. And so. That happens, and we come back to the scene of the crime, Eagle Field, except there's no more drag racers, nobody there except, you know, probably 10 or 20 random people that just wanted to see if this thing actually would wheelie. And we go out there, and Tony and I are in the truck, put it up on the converter, breaks a U-joint. We're in the middle of nowhere. It takes four hours to get a U-joint and get back there and install it. Just put that U-joint in, go back to the starting line, put it on the converter, rips the drive shaft in half. Okay. Now it's late at night. We were supposed to only be there for one day to pick up shots of this thing wheeling to end our episode. What are we going to do now? There's a guy standing there who just happens to have a 1954 F6 two-ton dump truck. <laughs> Says, why don't you come to my house and pull the drive shaft out of that? Okay. Why does he have one? It doesn't matter. Because he, he does. <laughs> he inherited it. His grandpa <laughs> bought it 30 years ago. He inherited it. It's been sitting in his backyard. Guy's got it. So we go there. Get the drive shaft out of that truck. He loans us his welder and tools. We cut the front half of his drive shaft off, weld our yoke onto it. Get up yesterday morning, put it in Bob. Epic wheelies. Just epic. The wheelie bar did not work. As soon as <laughs> as soon as it went up, it broke the wheelie bar. And we end up riding the trailer hitch for, I don't know, a hundred feet. Just 
just dragging it down an airport runway, hopefully not destroying it and getting us uh, getting our lifetime pass revoked there. But it was amazing. I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I got married. I made babies. Those two things are the best moments of my life. This is number three. Number three, number three yeah. right there. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I'm driving when the epic really happens. So it comes down fairly soft. My back's okay. Get out. High five, Tony. Dude, it's your turn. Go for it. So Tony gets in. Wait, wait, wait. Can I go back? Yeah. The wheelie bar did not work, but the wheelie did work. So yeah, did you did you just it, change how you drove it? No, I didn't realize the wheelie bar had broken. So Oh, so you're I, still emotionally or psychologically thinking I can't kill myself here. Just Right. Go. I had no idea I was <laughs> dragging the trailer hitch down the runway. I see. I, I knew we were high. I didn't know how high we were. It's like the placebo effect, like I got a wheelie bar. Nothing can exactly. happen. Exactly. I'll be fine. Exactly. I get out of the truck, I walk back, I see the wheelie bars bent, twisted, not doing anything. And I look at the trailer hitch, and we've drug almost through the receiver part where the hitch goes into. I mean, almost all the way through it. And then I looked at the beer keg and went, well, it, it doesn't look like we scuffed it. All right, well, Tony, go for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Clearly, I did we it. Need, we don't have <laughs> the wheelie bar anymore. So Tony gets in it and does a wheelie, a, a good one. He's kind of he's off center a little bit. He's going to run off the runway, so he aborts, comes back gives it more RPM, puts it up on the trailer hitch. And I had told him, I'm like, the reason it fell down when I was driving, we went for a while and then we just ran out of RPM and Mm -hmm. it fell down. I'm like, as soon as it gets up there, shift to third and you'll keep going. He's like, okay. Puts it up there on the hitch, shifts to third, drive shaft falls out of the truck. dude. (laughs) (laughs) It fell out. (laughs) Oh, and then it fell out of the truck and then the truck just fell from the sky. Bang! Bent the axle. The, the yoke was that small, so when it was vertical, it just blink, It had fell. a slip yoke. Oh. And the slip yoke came apart. And Tony just fell from the sky the same way I fell from the sky, the poor guy. <laughs> and it fell down and bent our new axle. You know, just wrecked the truck pretty good. But what it also did, and which is the reason why the drive shaft fell out, was early on I realized there was a design flaw with this thing and it was that that motor plate is holding the engine vertically. It's not holding it front to back. It's not triangulated anything. And I'm like, all right, we need to go back and triangulate this thing down to the chassis because when you're doing a wheelie, the motor is trying to fall out of the truck. Basically all that's holding it forward and backwards is that rubber motor, rubber trans mount with a single bolt through it. Hmm. Well, we never did it. We forgot about it. So Hmm. when Tony wheelie, the motor tried to fall out of the truck, which is why the drive shaft pulled apart. And it actually bent the aluminum motor plate backwards, probably an inch. Yeah, so and so it really didn't fall. The motor pulled it out. Yeah, the motor pulled the drive shaft apart yeah. because the motor was trying to fall out of the truck. Uh huh. And so the great news out of all this is obviously proof of concept. Um, I'm not sore this time so much. But we have three things to address in terms of the development of the truck and we can keep doing wheels, which Tony and I agree. That's the most fun you can have now in a car. I don't think he's going to drift ever again. I think he's just going to try to do wheelies and things, which it is, is a God bless America. Wah, 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 wah. You never want it to end type I wheelie. I've I, played that video so many times. I could not believe it. I, I, and I, my first question I didn't even want to ask was like, are you driving or is this somebody else? I hope you didn't shoot this. I hope this is you. And no, it, was, it, it was you and the one that yeah, you sent no, me. Yeah, the video is shot by a couple of the guys that were hanging around. So the, that video is me driving and then we have a couple others of Tony driving. And, it's uh, it's great. Yeah, somebody online asked, why don't you get one of the professional drivers, the wheelie guys, to do it? And I'm like, what fun is that? I'm like, you know how hard we worked on this truck? Why am I going to let somebody else drive it? There's no way. There's no, it reminds me of, there's a, I don't remember the guy's name, but there's some guy on YouTube with a channel and he's he's got some competition where all these YouTube builders uh, build cars and they race them at a couple different places or something. And you pay, I don't know, something insane, like $2,000 to enter or something. Uh-huh. And a professional drives your car. And it's, and people kept asking me to enter and I'm like, why the hell would I build a car to let someone else drive it? There's no fun in that. There's no fun in that at all. No. <laughs> No, I mean, why it, would I pay two grand to let somebody else drive my if car? If you built a wheelie car specifically, 
you nobody should drive it. Oh, you want to wheelie it? Yeah, that was the whole point. Otherwise, don't build it, man. So, so uh, oh, last night we celebrated way too much, forgot to eat, and I'm hungover. Uh, Welcome to the Kivy and Show, uh, Finnegan Show. Uh, we're <laughs> we're in iTunes, iHeartRadio. Over five hundred five star uh, reviews now in iTunes. Doing quite well. Good looking out. Yeah, yeah, people are getting here. So uh, you are on your way to the SEMA show, and I, I am too. We, we may never see each other there. We're not going to record there. Uh, we're we're going to be like two ships passing in the night, I think. And that sucks. Cause I... <laughs> <laughs> are you going to see your wife there? No, she's watching the kids. I was supposed to be home yesterday. I was going to f- take a red eye. Go home and come back? Go home, hug everyone, and you know leave for Vegas today. Except the truck kept breaking, the sheet ran long, and so I didn't go home. So I, I'm going to fly into Vegas today and do some laundry and maybe get a haircut because I've been on the road for two weeks. I'm out of underwear. Hmm. <laughs> Need some boxers for SEMA. So, no, so then you're going to the SEMA show. You're going to work a full week at SEMA, and yeah. just, so nobody thinks. Uh, well, not work. It, it's SEMA. I mean, I'm it's not. it's fun. It's hard. It's exhausting, but it's fun. Yeah. And then uh, what are you going to do? You're going to go home Saturday. Uh, I'm going to go home for 24 hours. Uh-huh. I'm going to try to again. Uh, hug my kids and my wife. Um, maybe try to have some relations with her, no matter who I am. And then... Uh, the wife, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. 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 Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> and then jump on a plane again and go film another roadkill. As well. Okay. Is the next one Europe? No. No. Uh, the Europe thing's... The, we're not filming a roadkill now. Uh, cooler head... Roadkill typically typically happens in like five to seven days. That's about all we get to build something and road trip it or race it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the Europe thing, there was no practical way to create good content in that amount of time. When you burn up, you know, Three a day and a half traveling. traveling. Yeah. So uh, we're not not going to film an episode because our original idea was to ship the Dragwar over there to and its drive homeland. It yeah. Yeah. Take the Dragwar home. But uh, they wouldn't let us bring it into the country. <laughs> <laughs> did they? Get, did they watch the video? Like, oh no, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't know who they is, but I was told it, it, uh, we would not be able to bring it in the country. It would not be licensed or insurable to drive on the roads, and uh, so that just kind of took the wind out of those sails in terms of shooting there. Okay. Well, yeah. for people listening, thinking like Mike and I plan stuff, we don't. This is how we get caught up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't talked to you in a while. I've texted you a lot, but I haven't talked to you. Yeah, yeah, and it's honestly, I, I've been pretty busy myself. And as soon as we're done, it's right back to the grind. I will get. I'm not even going to be in Vegas for 48 hours. Uh, it's like 46. I have 11 interviews booked for Muscle Car Place, and four meetings scheduled. Nice. It uh, as soon as I land, I'll I'll hit the ground. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is go on a Cobra Drift Friday morning for Super Force and then go right to the airport and go home. Who do you get to interview? Anybody cool? Uh, well, I'm interviewing the coolest guy right now. Actually, I'm not. We're, this is a co-hosted show. But, uh, I, do, I don't even know. It, it goes on and on. Are they on all on. sales managers or product companies? Half of them are fun people. And the other half are, yeah, they're more products and stuff like that. When I go do these product-y type interviews, though, I go out of my way to try to make them laugh or to, if it gets at all salesy. I mean, we, there are so many interviews I've done at SEMA that we just deleted. Man, screw it. We're not going to do that. Like I, I went and did a, like a courtesy one for uh, a friend with a media company, an unnamed media company. Uh, and it was garbage. God, it was garbage. So I deleted that. I've, I've deleted many. Uh, but yeah, if they start laughing, if it gets fun or if they have something I want to buy, then then we usually run it for sure right. and then i'm um, doing a couple things you know for us you know while we're there uh but otherwise it's it's more of a turn and burn and really i, I even feel bad saying this to you because I, I know you're gonna miss out on it like th- i've missed out on trick-or-treating for years so this oh, year yeah. i i made the point i won't miss it no matter what no matter what i have to give up so there are like four different things i was invited to tomorrow that I really probably should have done, but screw it. I'm, I don't care. I'm uh, staying home yeah. for trick or treats. Man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not going, I say that now it's a year away, but internally I'm like, 
I haven't been home in two and a half weeks. I'm not going on Halloween next year. I wish they'd move the show. I like, don't know bump, why they do it. Bump Just it a week, man. One week later would be fine. I already looked yeah. it up. Next year it starts on October 30th. Jesus. Yeah. Right? So, so I, I don't know. I may, uh, you know, be there for the 30th, red eye home, hang out with my kids on Halloween, red eye back. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I may <laughs> do that, but I'm, I'm not hanging out on Halloween if I can help it. Okay, well, since that's the case, let's have a little Halloween fun. Today okay. Today is October 30th here. Mike, do you know... Oh, wait, let me get some spooky music on here. There we go. This is the Scooby-Doo theme. It was the spookiest thing I could find. <laughs> let's have that in the background here. Okay, Mike, what? do you know what the original name for candy corn was? It was not always called candy corn when it was first came out. Around my house, it was called. Don't put that in your mouth. It's not wrapped. It, it, uh, that, it that was the way. that was the second name it was called. The original name was Chicken Feed. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, made by a company. Did that some other company rebought it, rebranded it, turned it into candy corn. Waxy wow. goodness. On that happy fact, uh, hey, CandyStore.com had a survey of forty thousand customers. 40,000, and came up with the 10 best and 10 worst Halloween candies. Which list do you want to do? Mm, 10 best and 10 worst candies. Let's go worst. Okay. And this is 40,000 people, right? So they should know stuff. Number 10, Mary Jane's. Never had them. It, it's like a bit of honey. We had a bit of honey. Bit of honey's okay, but Mary Jane. I thought that'd be too. like uh, other versions. Uh, good and plenty, number nine worst. Good and fruity's better, definitely. Totally right. Uh, gummies and stuff, I think, are always popular. I don't like them because they stick to my teeth. Licorice, number eight. That does not, okay. and it doesn't gl- include Twizzlers. But grapevines are the bomb. What are grapevines? Uh, it's uh, grape flavored licorice. You know red vines? Yeah, it's like licorice, but one little strand of it. No, no, no. Red vines are just regular pieces of licorice you know, in a box with blue and red cellophane over it. Um, yeah, Twizzlers doesn't come in a box like red vines kind of does. But uh-huh. they have great, they have great vines. They're, they're yummy. There's a lot of candy I don't know. When I was a kid, I was violently allergic to sugar. So I was not allowed to have any sugar-related foods. And until I met my wife, I never had a sweet tooth for anything. Actually, until I met her, I'd never had a filling Nice work. Now I've had many. Number seven is Smarties. Number six is Tootsie Rolls. Oh, you take that back. That's on the worst list? I eat Tootsie Rolls every day. They're in the candy dish in the lobby here. I always grab a handful on the way out. Number five, Peanut Butter Kisses. And they say these are neither Reese's Peanut Butter Cups nor Hershey Kisses. Oh, I I know what they are. Yeah. These are the kind of sour tasting one. They're in an orange and black wrapper. Yes, that sucks, balls. That's no good. Number four, Necco wafers. It's kind of like a yeah. tube of chalk. Yeah. yeah, those aren't very good. Number three, wax Coke bottles. Could do without those. Yeah, I remember. I think I had one when I was a kid, and I was like, "This is the worst crap." It, it's just wax with a little bit of liquid in it, like syrup. <laughs> Number Why would two, you eat wax. Yeah. I don't know, and I always want a diet Coke version. But Which is why candy corn sucks too. Because it's pretty much wax. Candy corn is number two on the list. What the, is number one? Oh, I'll, I'll bet you could figure this out. Number one worst candy ever. Mm-hmm. Black licorice. <laughs> no, that was they. They kind of put all licorice in there. But number one, this is kind of an old timey candy. Um, it's a circus peanut. Oh, what? It's called a circus peanut, and. It, it, it may not be the brand name, but you'll know when you see it. Oh, it looks it's like orange. A, it looks like a giant peanut in a shell, but it's made of like unfun, fluffy goo. Yeah, I know what it is. They suck. Yes, it it is a bad candy. It's a bad. It's kind of like like Peeps. You know, in theory, you're like, ah, that's gonna be amazing. You kind of have half of one. You're like, ah, these really suck, man. But everybody buys them every year for some reason. They do. They do. Do you know what number one on the best list is? 
Ooh, the best candy ever, man. Are we mm-hmm. talking high-end candy included or candy like you get at 7-Eleven? No, we're not talking about like the chocolate tier okay. place at Disney World. We're talking about a consumer candy. A candy okay. for the common man. Um, And I, I agree with this one. You got to break this down into groups because there's the fruit group. There's the chocolate group. There's chocolate with other the, condiments. Group. The, they put it all together. Here, Here's, here's what, what it is isn't. It? it is not Kit Kats. And it is no. not Twix. No, it's not number one. It is a chocolate. And it's mixed with the only other thing that chocolate should be mixed with. Chocolate nuts? It better not be a Nestle bar. Those are horrible. It's a Reese's peanut butter cup. Nah. Those but, are too rich, right? You have one and a half, and you're just like, whoa. Can't have there's, more. There's, there. They mention a size. There's a size in here that's the right okay. chocolate to peanut butter ratio. Like, if you ever get the Easter Bunny version, that, that, that's no good. You don't need that. But the like ratio it. is important. It is. Now I'm gonna like a, I'm gonna put in this this caveat here, uh, a frozen one. Frozen is better. Think of Oreos, right? Like a regular Oreo is pretty dry and crappy, but you take four of them apart and make a quad Oreo. You know, just lots of stuffing. It's great. Now go the other way. Those new Oreo thins. The cookie is thinner, but it has the right amount of filling making it better than a regular Oreo. I have to get back to you on that one. Less is more. Try it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will absolutely try that out. All right. What should we do here next? Um, do we have time for an email? Uh-huh. Yeah. Tell me. We have time for an email. This is Aaron Hicks. Aaron says, um, I just want to let you guys know that I think your show is great, and the witty banter is what makes it so entertaining. That's the very reason I found your show, because of the same witty banter uh, that Finnegan and Freiburger had in the Roadkill episodes, or have in the Roadkill episodes. Um, I copied this in like three weeks ago, so I'm, I'm having trouble reading it. It says, I had only listened to what was on Finnegan's Garage before and had no idea what I had been missing. My favorite part of these shows is when you and Finnegan tell stories of your checkered pass. These are gold. <laughs> Please tell more checkered past stories. Good luck on your dream board. Uh, he's got more than I do because I'm basically a saint. <laughs> Dirtbag. You just didn't get caught. Come on. I did a lot of horrible things. I never got, I almost got hit by a train once. Tell me that story. That one, uh, that one, that will give me cold sweats at night. <sighs> Jeez. I still think of it. my best friend from high school, uh, who's my best man at my wedding, still one of my best friends. Although we have, we've gone very different paths We we don't believe the same things about the hereafter. We have very different political views, but we're still, we're still tight. He can do movies like you can. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's a real good deep on. In fact, he just contacted me uh, on Saturday and said, let's go to the East West East coast next summer and buy a car for a grand and drive it to the West coast. There and, you go. And every time a car breaks, we can't fix it. We have to buy another car. <laughs> opposite of roadkill That's i said like sure can we put gas in it yeah we can put gas in it but we can't, can't road, fix it on roadkill we've talked about um starting you know in vermont with one car and having to trade the car before we leave the state every day oh okay this is this is not as complex but very very similar well anyway he and i uh after college one of the things we used to do in cedar rapids is you go down the southeast side of town by the uh the the waste rendering plant and you walk on the railroad tracks and there's two sets of tracks outbound and inbound. And we were walking on the outbound tracks and we were too stupid to get off the tracks as the inbound was flying by and we're just walking along and we're talking and try to suck you in. We're talking, we've done it a million times. Uh, so no, it was fine. We were talking and talking and talking. And just for some strange reason, I turned and looked over my shoulder behind me and holy crap, Hundred feet. There was a, there was a there was a, the outbound was coming. We couldn't oh, hear couldn't it. Hear it because of the inbound. because of the noise of the other one. So I jumped off the track, yelled at him, and he never heard me. So I jumped back on, and grabbed him, and threw him off with me. And I you know I kind of fell on top of him, and we landed down. To the, I'm, my hands are shaking now thinking about it. I mean it was. Wow. Uh, my. Dad is about to hear this story because he listens to all of our show. I, I don't think my wife even knows this one. Scared the bejesus out of me. We got up and we started running. 
And uh, we were, I think I had my Chevelle like half a mile away. And we were freaked out. We didn't know if they were going to call the cop. We had no idea what to do. We were terrified. Wow. Um, the train stopped. By the time we got to the car, so the, the, what had happened is the, the inbound train had called and said, there's two idiots on the tracks. Stop. So the train behind us tried to stop, but it took him another half a mile Yeah. to get it slowed down. I mean, it was terrifying. <laughs> so in the end, kids, don't walk on railroad tracks. Don't. Don't do it. But that, that was something. And I mean, we weren't drinking. We weren't doing anything. We were just out there bumming around, just do, doing stupid things. Uh, I also like threw a rock one night out there and knocked out uh, the inbound traffic lights. Feel bad about that one. I hope the statute's up on that one. <laughs> it was just a lucky accident. <laughs> it was just a lucky. I hope so, too. It was just a lucky shot because we were trying to see how well we could throw with our other hand. So I was Lucky throwing shot. everything left-handed. You were there half an hour trying to knock it out. <laughs> I got it on my first try. <laughs> I picked it up, just winged it, and bam! Oh, that was another one where we where we went running. There you go, checkered pass story of the day. I'm All freaked right. out saying that. I have a head rush. Yeah, I never want to do that again. Uh, what else are we gonna do? We got any burning questions with Bernie? We got any email? What are we? Uh, what are we rolling? We, we don't. We're at the point where we do need to do our last ad for greats. Oh, because, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, and then we need to get to our not show review, but our movie review. Let me uh, let me start off the uh, the great dad as appropriately as I can here. They're great. I pulled that. Uh, you wouldn't believe how long it took me to get that. They're great. Tony the Tiger. There's a lot of versions of Tony the Tiger. You know how uh, you know his voice. You know who that guy is. Uh-uh. Um, he is also the voice for the Grinch. You're a new um, one, Mr. Grinch. Do, 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 do. I always thought Boris that was... Boris um, Karloffer. Yeah, I, but I, when I was a kid, I used to think that was the guy that did Star Wars, James Earl Jones, or Dark Vader. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Boris Karloff, who I, I wouldn't know at all other than the Grinch. Uh, he's old, and he's dead. He has a mustache. Anyway, I mean, this episode... Hand hand <laughs> things. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Greats. Their third and final... Final show. That in fact, I was shopping for some greats this morning, because at SEMA I don't want to look like a hobo, and I thought I need some shoes, and they have a shoe that I do like, uh, and I'm trying to see if I can get it pronto. Hopefully that can happen. Greats, Mike, is Brooklyn's first sneaker company. They sell all the greats, classic styles made for the best for last. Wide selection of men's and women's shoes, versatile styles suitable for any occasion. SEMA counts as any occasion. Tons of different colors and materials to choose from. Their best sellers are the all-leather Royale lace-up and Wooster slip-on. Not with cheese. The Wooster or the Royale? The Royale. The Royale. Yeah, correct. Not with cheese. I do have my Mm. white Royales. The thing is, they're so white, I, I just, I feel terrible about getting them dirty. So I have sniffed them hundreds of times, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they're leather, dude. They're, they're, t- I know they're going to say that's crazy. We built them to wear, but I, they're so nice. SEMA is almost 100% carpet. It's a safe environment. Uh, you, you might as well wear them. Great point. I'm going to wear them. I'm absolutely going to do it. And I'm going to look like a freaking rock star in these babies. Uh, but if the, if the Royale is not what you're after, and I got the all white, I mean, it's triple white. Like that's if you, if you got a Rolls Royce, it, these, they're the boss hogs of shoes. They are. White yeah. exterior, white interior, white top. Uh, but if, if white is not yours, you can get all your different colors. And we have a 15% discount code off your first order. Just use KAFS. Go to greats.com, place your order. And when you're checking out, KAFS is how you get your, your discount. Greats, thank you for giving us a shot. We know our listeners are going to give a shot to you. That's where we are. All right. So now, Mike, we are at the point where we normally do a show review, but we're going to do a movie review this time. And we're going to do a movie review that I have realized is a movie review, not of John Cusack, but of you. I have, I have a working theory that I'm about to lay on you. On October 11th, 1985, Savage Steve Holland wrote and directed an Americana classic called Better Off Dead. And this is the story of young Mike Finnegan 
dating in the world, making his way, skiing the K-12. Mike, do you do you have a summary of this movie? I gotta be honest. I thought I was hoping to hear you keep going with this theory of yours. Oh, I'm. I'm I have. I have talking points as we go, but the oh, super okay. summary well, is something people love. Here's if, the thing. If you I have am, one. I am hungover. I am underprepared even more than usual. I wrote nothing for this, here's but <laughs> I've seen this movie a hundred times, so I feel like I can wax poetic to a certain degree um, about a story, which is not what you might think. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw you for a loop here. This is not about Lane Myers quest for skiing supremacy or Beth or escaping the hell that is his home life. No, this is about a young boy's quest for two freaking dollars and respect. Yes, oh, the kid, this, the paper boy. Yeah. This movie. Interesting. Is about a paper boy. Yeah. Okay. This is about a boy <laughs> on the verge of becoming a man. If only Lane Meyer and his crooked family would pay him the money he's owed for the service he's delivered. It's a measly $2. That's all it is. And he's fighting for it. Mm-hmm. Whether it's chasing Lane on the street, chasing him down the mountain, chasing him through a car wash, even though he cannot swim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he is not going to give up until he gets his $2, which will enable him to buy some prophylactics and finally become a man. That's what Better Act Diet is really about. Did the you? End. Did you prepare that? No, I just thought of it like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god. I remember every great line from this movie, but really, if you want to know who played who and who's still alive and who's dead and whatever, I got nothing. I didn't even look at IMDb. Here, here is the... You know what? The Paperboy has the very last line. He absolutely does. When he's riding his bike into Dodger Stadium, he goes, ah. I want my $2. As he goes, yes, you were right. $2 is the paper boys credo and has become like a staple in America. You can say, I want my $2 and everybody knows what you're talking about, but I am telling you the title character in here, John Cusack Lane Meyer is really you or you're him. I'm not sure which. <laughs> okay. Fool me. I gotta know. Okay. Well you grow up and I'm going to assume you do well with the ladies. You seem like that kind of guy, but at right. this, but at the same time, Maybe you aspired to more, more in life. Ladies. And, sure. Yeah. And maybe one of the ladies left you because they thought you're not going to amount to anything. Oh, I got dumped. Yeah. Yeah. Christy Piper, if you're out there, yeah, left me hanging. So basically, Christy Piper forced you to date the French girl across the street who fixed your Camaro. Didn't you have a Camaro? I did. Yeah. See? I did. Had a, first car was a Camaro. Not nearly as cool as that one. What year was it again? 76 okay yeah less cool but we're we're, we're just 350 it was horrible but a lot of your your delivery of of phrases is very lane meyerish i i have (laughs) pulled i've never thought this but lay it on me okay i'm gonna play a 51 second clip here and this is really with half of it's like booger uh, but it's these two guys on the mountain. Oh, I just, love this part. Just wait until the end. This is this is why you're lame. Oh, look, dude. It's Christmas Eve. I could be home right now, drinking this monster eggnog my brother makes with lighter fluid. Now, you've been staring over that edge for hours. But people die down there. And dying when you're not really sick is really sick, you know? Really. Charles, this is very important to me. I mean, really. I mean, if I don't believe in myself, I'm nothing. I'll be as bad as my neighbor, Ricky Smith, who sits around crocheting all day and and snorting nasal spray. I gotta do it. He snorts nasal spray? You know where I can score some? Are you gonna help me or not? All right, all right, all right. (laughs) I'll tell you what to do. Go that way. Really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. What a coach. See, <laughs> and you're not booger. You're the other one. You're late. Uh, I, what I a coach! I appreciate. I'm not. You don't think I'm booger, and that I wouldn't have snorted Jello off a plate in the cafeteria. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know what's uh i've always heard this and i've never confirmed it but i've i heard that cusack was locked into a two-picture deal and after this picture he never wanted to speak to savage steve holland again and didn't want to do one crazy summer Oh my gosh, you uh, you're would have sucked because I love those movies. Your your knowledge uh, abounds a many. So here here's some of the insider analysis that would normally be provided by Corn Dog, but has been replaced by Wikipedia Film Reception. Oh. Here's what it says: the film received pos- positive reviews from critics with an 82 percent fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes. Based on 22 reviews, the consensus was that Better Off Dead is an archaic mix of black humor and surreal comedy anchored by John Cusack's winsome, <coughs> charming performance. However, Siskel and Ebert, Ebert gave it two thumbs down. And then I'll kind of flip ahead here. According to Savage Steve Holland, Cusack did not like the film and walked out of a screening as both were making One Crazy Summer, later confronting Holland saying, Better Off Dead was the worst thing I have ever seen. I will never trust you as a director ever again, so do not speak to me. Holland claimed that Cusack felt he had been made to look foolish and that his comments made me not care about movies anymore. However, it gets, it, we get resolved here. In 2013, Reddit uh, did the Ask Me Anything chat with John Cusack where he was asked if he hated filming Better Off Dead. He responded, no, I just thought it could have been better, but I think that about almost all of my films, I have nothing against the film. Glad people still love it. That was That's- a I, I hope Cusack on is one of the funniest people ever, and I've you know he, he's I've, a, he's great in a lot of movies. Oh, dude, but th- this movie is the one that made me love him. Gross Point Blank. I mean, Gross Point's yeah. one of my top tens too. Oh man, he's great. So I like to think he's not a jerk. So that's good. Box Office Mojo. Uh, this movie in 1985 made 10.3 million dollars. It's about 24 million today. So. By today's standards, that would not be a good movie, but by then it was good. Uh, this was not John Cusack's first movie. Um, I think it was his second lead. So he was prior to this, he was in 16 Candles. He was very mm-hmm. funny in that, and he was in The Sure Thing. And I haven't seen The Sure Thing. Do you know that one? Yeah, The Sure Thing kind of sucks, but uh, you know, it's in the vein of you know 16 Candles. It's just not nearly as funny, you know. But uh, if you're a Cusack fan, go watch it. You know, it's good. Cusack's dad is David Ogden Stiers. Who is he better known as, Mike? Oh, he's... But I can't remember his name, but he was in MASH. He was hysterical in MASH. Charles Emerson Winchester the third. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The, the, if you, if you want to see him in a nutshell in MASH, look up the episode where um, Klinger gets arrested, is on trial, and Charles offers to um be his lawyer in court and it's just he's such an idiot it's so funny he's no you have to understand Klinger. the first syllable of winchester is win win yes <laughs> yes <laughs> totally okay the mom some of this stuff was fun for me to learn i didn't know most of it kim darby is his mom uh the actress she is a cuckoo nutty wacko woman in here um but she was also in another movie with john wayne the movie was True Grit. Mm. Did you know that? I've never seen that movie. I've never seen it, but I know that's a big deal. Uh, Monique. Monique, the actress, she's not French. She's I'm, still hot, though. She looks, you seen a she, recent picture of her? She looks exactly like she did then. I am. Yeah. Um, Roy Stalin is played by actor Aaron Dozier, and he has really done nothing else ever again. But oh. he was the best D-bag snow yeah. skier ever in this one. Yeah. I've, I've, for those that like the clips, I've got clip, I've got a lot of good clips. Just after we're done here, kick back and enjoy. But then go I watch try, the movie. I try not to profile people when I'm snowboarding, but pretty much anyone on two sticks, I have an instant image of Stalin in my brain when I'm going down the hill. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you're so, just a bunch of Stalins out there. Mar, I see we have something else in common. Our love for skiing, of course. <laughs> dude, he's just I'm such a you. douche. The best part about this movie is you and I could cut this review off right now and you could just play the clips and I would be in heaven. You, I don't know if you listen to this show, but you should listen to this one. At least listen to the clips. <laughs> yeah, I never listen to them. I don't have any, I don't have any time. But the, the, the one-liners in here, you know. I, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago that 
Um, the guy working on the power pole when Lane tries to commit suicide and lands in the dump truck when he jumps off the bridge, <laughs> that's Captain Fuller from 21 Jump Street. And he literally <laughs> says something to the effect of, you know, it's a it's a damn shame when people be throwing away like, a perfectly good white boy like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Ricky's mom, I, when I went back to get clips for this, I forgot how funny she is. Yeah. This is premium liqueur, Janelle. Then we get this line. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Doctor said she'll be okay. I guess she just won't be able to eat any spicy foods for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see her lighting her cigarette and blowing up the house, dude. This reminds me of his dead pappy. God bless him. Uh, I, I know we're, we're both up against the clock here, but we haven't talked about the car, and we do need to talk about the car. You go ahead. I love the car. His, we are up against the clock. His Camaro in the movie is a black 67 Camaro Rally Sport. Uh, it's supposed to be an SS. It's not. Uh, it's kind of faked out that way. But an RSSS 350 is what it's portrayed as. It's got 14 by 6 rallies on the front, 15 by 7s on the back. They have a stagger on the back, so it's it's meaty. And Lane's the the B roll story of this whole thing is that Lane is perpetually drag racing two Asian brothers in like a early 60s whooped four door Falcon. And one of them only speaks Howard Cosell, and the other can drive. And they have so, a PA system, so the brother that speaks Howard Cosell is announcing these drag races, and it's hysterical. Lane Meyer races <coughs> and loses multiple times in his daily driver, his like 73 Ford LTD four-door wagon. But when he gets the Camaro and rolls up in that, he blows those boys away. Now, the guy that did the burnout in the Camaro was the transportation director. But Monique, who the actress for Monique, she was the one riding shotgun that flipped that bird. She was definitely in the car, for sure. Uh, that car, uh, and I think maybe we talked about this in the last show, but uh, that car was bought by a fan. It was restored to its screen presence glory, complete with the Mr. Gasket air filter. It lives somewhere near Durango, Colorado. I internet stalked the guy once I've even found his house. Like would be cool to see that car again. He used to have the, the website better off dead Camaro.com. It's gone now, but this movie, oh, I love this movie so much. It made me so happy to get to go through and review this. I'm sorry. We don't have time to even go through all the clips together, but for me, I, what did, what rating did you give before I give mine? Oh, it's an 11. I mean, it's one of my all time favorite movies, you know, and, and I realize it's not for everyone. You, you need to be a fan of, you know, really stupid, you know, lowbrow humor as I am. Um, essentially, you need to have emotionally stopped maturing at age 14 to uh, really enjoy this movie or anything like it. You know, yeah. space balls, that sort of thing. It's great. So, yeah, this is an 11 <laughs> out of 10 truck stop foot long corn dogs. Well, for me, uh, for building a space shuttle in Badger's room out of vacuum cleaner parts, for blowing up Ricky's mother, for wearing Aardvark winter coats, complete with a head, <laughs> for. <laughs> For 80s skiing jerk elitists who are beat by uh, cool yet insecure Camaro drivers. For a claymation hamburger playing Eddie Van Halen's guitar. This also gets a perfect 11 out of 10 corn dogs for me. And this was also one of my one of my best friends, Scotty P's uh, rest in peace. It, it was one of his favorites too. I loved it. He knew how to pick a winner too. So this one is this one is freaking kick ass awesome. So listen to all the clips after the show. Uh, make sure to go to greats.com today and buy yourself some really kick shoes and use a, use our code KAFS when you check out and you'll get 15% off. And sometime after SEMO, we'll be back with the next show. We'll probably have a Dukes of Hazard one. You can find all of our stuff on the inter internet. Of course, uh, we, we won't list it because by now you should know it, but Instagram's a good place. I would go there. Mike, anything else? Nope. Off like a prom dress. Getting on an airplane. Alrighty, everybody, thank you for listening. We will catch you next time.